Well, imagine this. You've carefully grown your microgreen business. You've marketed it. You've sold them to home deliveries, to restaurants, to grocery stores, and other athletes. But when it comes to selling them on a large scale, you may have become a hurdle you've never thought of. GAP certification. Welcome to the Mike Green Thumbcast. This is episode 28. I am your host, Mike, with my co-host, Andy, as always. Andy, how are you doing today? Doing well. How about yourself? Doing great. Excited for this episode. It's going to be a good one. Yep, I agree. I'm still coming off that cold a little bit, so my voice is a little jacked up, but we're getting there. It's about 90% back. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, good thing we have a great guest today to do that. Uh, Andy, you want to introduce our guest today? Yeah, absolutely. So today we are thrilled to introduce our special guest, Carol Allen, uh, who is an expert in GAP certification, a PSA certified produce safety rule trainer, and is an associate agent, I'm sorry, agent associate in food safety in the Department of Plant Science at my alum, University of Maryland College Park. She holds a master's degree in plant science with a concentration in plant pathology, plant virus, and integrated pest management. And she is literally my personal GAP trainer here in the state of Maryland. Carol, welcome to the show. Awesome. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Mike. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for being here, Carol. And you got a great presentation for us to go over and uh, we'll get into that now. All right. Sounds good. Jess is bringing that up for you. And there we are. Look at that. All right. So, hey, <laughs> I'm in the right place. I'm talking about produce safety and microgreens. And we're going to cover both gap and produce safety rule. And I'm trying to get my mouse to cooperate here so that I can. There we go. All right. So why produce safety? Now, this sounds like a really dumb question, but it isn't because I really get oh, so much. Uh, I don't want to say pushback because that's a little negative, but I get a lot of producers, both conventional farmers, uh, hydroponic, aquaponic. I do it all. Controlled environment, ag. You know, why, why do I have to do this? Well, because what we want to do is we want to reduce the risk of hazards getting into the food stream and, and under gap and produce safety rule. All right. We cover all three types of hazards. So you've got physical hazards. You've got like the light sh shattering above your head and falling down into your produce. That's going to ruin your day. Okay. Brittle plastic. Likewise. What about little parts of your tools breaking and falling off into the product or edges of containers, containers that should have been retired a long time ago. So we have physical hazards, we've got chemical hazards. And I know in microgreens, we don't use like mega chemicals, but you still have concentrates of cleaning and sanitizing solutions. Um, you may have some pesticides, I don't think so. Hydraulic fluids, if you've got any like mechanical thingy majigs. So you do potentially have possible chemical hazards, but what we really drill down on is microbial hazards because, oh my gosh, they come from everything. Your beloved workers, hands, their clothing, maybe they petted Fido's, but they walked out the door and right into your grow room and they've got dog slobber on their hands, okay? We don't have to say <laughs> anymore, all right? Maybe it's simply your growing area has gotten away from you and you've just got some poor sanitation or poor housekeeping going on in your growing area. And you think, well, that's that's not where the racks are. That's like next to the racks. My racks are clean. But you believe it or not, guys, that adjacent growing area or storage area, if there's poor sanitation, poor housekeeping in there, you've got potential for cross-contamination. And then when we're talking about controlled environment ag, regardless of whether it's um, sprouts or microgreens or hydroponic, leafy greens, whatever. You've got a whole new set of pests to worry about. Conventional farming, we worry about deer, feral pigs, but in controlled environment ag, we worry about cockroaches. Yeah, I'm sorry. And they're easy enough to bring in. Or those mice, those wonderful mice that wanna come in and they look right out of Disney. Yeah, they can really wreck your day. So you're going to need actually a, a pest control strategy. Um, the other thing to watch out for is improper cleaning and sanitizing practices. There's a lot of stuff out there. And most of what I hear is not the most effective and efficient use of your time or your chemicals involved. Um, and then we have seed contamination. Remember, we're taking that seed from the supplier. 
we're growing it into its little microgreen. If there's contamination on that seed, you can get transference onto your microgreens. I know better than sprouts, we have that separation between substrate and the actual product that we cut off, but, but, but that's proximity. And as um, a food safety agent, I go, ooh, that's proximity. I don't like that. So knowing where you get your seed from and making sure that it's just there's no contamination. Manure was not used on the field. I know that's getting into sprout um, qualifications, but you know, it's okay. You can be better than, than average, all right? So seed contamination and then water contamination. Um, pardon me, I do have one of my supervisors helping me out here. <laughs> so we do a lot of, of concentrating on water testing or evaluating what your water source is. But then again, I raised that little question of, okay, so it's really good at the faucet. What's your distribution system like? Uh-huh. Do you have algae growing in your spray bottles? Hmm. Something I might worry about. All right. So it's going. So we know that microbes are, are, are ubiquitous. They are ever present. And we worry in food safety, we worry, we worry. Um, I don't lose that much sleep over it, okay? We worry about E. coli. Now, E. coli is a big uh, genus of bacteria, and they are really all over the environment. What we really get excited about is 0157H7. That is the particular strain of E. coli that causes hemorrhagic uremia. So when you read about like CDC having interstate um, disease outbreaks, foodborne outbreaks, and they say it's E. coli, usually it's 0157H7 because that's a killer and we don't want that. So E. coli are ever present in, in animal feces and there's a whole bunch of species just live in the environment. Okay. And then there's salmonella. We get salmonella from exposure of our growing area, containers, whatever, to animals in general, poultry specifically, and eggs. If you go, if you read, if, if you have trouble with insomnia, tune into the CDC um, website because it has wonderful, it tracks down all of these foodborne illness outbreaks. And you'll I, I'm sorry, I actually um, find that interesting. It may put you to sleep. That's why I say insomnia, go to the CDC web pages. And you're going to see that salmonella has reared its ugly little head, even with microgreens. And then there's listeria monocytogenes, or good old listeria. There's lots of different kinds, but we worry about monocytogenes. It likes really cool temperatures. So unlike E. coli and salmonella that really like kind of the warm temperatures, the same temperatures we grow microgreens under, yeah. Listeria kind of likes it cooler. And we find listeria most often just colonizing packing house drains. That's right, colonizing. We can't get rid of the suckers. So drains are a big issue and maintaining cleaning and sanitizing of drains should be on your list of things to do on a regular basis. And then there's wonderful Campylobacter. Oh, such a nice bacteria. All right. Um, <laughs> it's found in untreated water, exposure to poultry, exposure to meats. And, you know, I work with a lot of um, farms, a lot of operations where they are very diverse. And in Maryland, in particular, where I am located, our small to medium farmers, they survive on diversity. So you'll find that you've got someone doing maybe some conventional vegetables. They've got maybe hens in the yard that they're selling eggs. Maybe they sell a little poultry meat on the side. Then they've got the microgreen stand right there. So they are just ripe for cross-contamination. So that's why I mentioned where these bacteria can come from. Because if you have a diverse operation, yeah, you got to think about your managing cross contamination is going to is going to be it's going to be part of what you do on a regular basis. So, just to reiterate, microbes thrive in the same conditions that we grow microgreens in and they're easily moved by water and or dust, which is why housekeeping mm -hmm, actually becomes important. Oh, hey, how do you like my cool pictures of those microbes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 